to Aatrox, but Zeus's Yone is locked in. And I'm a sucker for this champion, but this is something you brought up at the start of the day, Kajal. I gotta give you credit, because you put it on our radar. You said there's a lot of stuff we can expect, but the thing I've got my eye on, the thing I'm waiting to see, is Zeus on this Yone. Yep. Champion has the incredible power, incredible snowball. Once he gets ahead, one, two item spikes, he is a massive threat. If you cast your mind all the way back to, I think it was Bro versus T1, is when we first got the taste of Zeus's Yone. It was Keria Lee Sin, I believe it was, with Gumiushi on, on the center. Yasuo, Diana, Yone was the top side they were playing, and he demolished his way through that game. But it's a very comfortable champion for him, a pocket pick. There's the Vi from way into owner Sejuani. Is it show who's Galio? Are we finally going to see the Galio coming through? Doesn't look like it. As yet, please don't go as here. <laughs> don't go no, to RNG, but, but it's cursed for the zero update. for RNG, yeah. but uh, okay, it looks like it is going to be the Silas. Oh, Immediate yeah. answer for Faker on the Akali. So again, we're probably going to get that Heimerdinger ban coming through. And compositionally, we have very similar looks for both sides. You've got these strong snowballing side laners. You've got a jungler who can help facilitate early action. Need to see how the bot lanes for both sides round out these compositions. What either team wants to take away. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Renata hit the bench this time around, but it could open up one of the 80 carries that RNG opted to take off the board in the previous game. Yeah, Filios is another champ that will be really high priority in these four fives. They're playing Sejuani support themselves, uh, jungle, sorry, just themselves here, T1, so they can play an engaged support instead of things like the Renata. So I don't think Carrier will be very hesitant to play things like Leona Nautilus if it comes to it. We'll see if he opts into it. We haven't seen too much Thresh yet. We'll see if that gets picked on later in the draft. Their solution ban, I think Aphelios is a no-brainer here for RNG. I think banning Heimerdinger doesn't make too much sense because they have such a heavy AP mid-jungle. Yeah, I mean, look, I actually think taking the Aphelios and the Thresh here would be super good for RNG, right? You get great positioning for, for your Aphelios. You got decent peel. Thank Coke for the likes of Dione and the Akali. Maybe you can help out, but we'll have to see exactly if that is going to be the game plan. Maybe even get Ming going towards something like the, the Tam Kench, to be honest. They're, if the Thresh should be banned away, maybe it's the TK that they want to go for. Make sure they've got that safety from the dive that T1 are going. Yeah, good Thresh ban there. I think T1's comp is really good at looking for picks, and I think Carrier wouldn't hesitate to lock that in on five. So this helps the blind pick here for RNG. Tom Kench makes sense because they can play Jinx. They can play Aphelios. They can play anything here on five. They can even play Severe, worst case. So I think T1 are very happy just blinding this Tom Kench. Now the RNG play a Brown lane or something along those lines to deny the Tom Kench. They go Estrial Karma to get the push. They have a couple of options here. I think it'll still be the Aphelios though, and then it does become a big question mark about what you want to go for. I think the, the Braum could be really, really good. We've also kind of seen things like uh, Ming's Alistair have also been great as well. That could also be another option. Will he play Lulu, do you think? Is that something Ming would lean towards? Doesn't strike yep. me as a huge Lulu player. I mean, he played a lot in the regular split, right? And it's something that can definitely help out with this Aphelios. Could do, deal with a lot of the threat that T1 have, but he has favored these engaged champions whenever yep. he gets the chance. And if it looks like that's going to be the plan here once more. Ming loves his Leona Nautilus, doesn't he? He loves his engage, as you just touched on. But have we big. got a curveball? This is what we wanted to see. T1 have already thrown a few. Soraka lock gonna be big. Okay. The silence is massive against the Yone, the Akali, the Tom Kench. Huge potential to take over the lane phase. Of course, vulnerable champion individually, but in fights, so incredibly impactful. It does mean, though, the Ming won't be as effective when it comes towards these early roams, and that's where he's kind of been working with Wei in these early stages to try and get things rolling for RNG. So it will come down to, it feels like, a lot of this topside brawl between RNG and T1 once more to see who will come out on top of Game 3. I'm surprised we see Avaris coming out here from Gumushi. I thought Jinx would be more his wheelhouse, but I suppose they want set up for the Soraka and follow up for these divers of T1. I I think it's also, as you say, like just having that lockup coming through from Chains of Corruption. If you hit onto the, the rest of the team as they try to follow up on Ways Engage, it's so easy then to try and follow through, but we will have to see. This is going to be another brawl. It is, and it's the same thing from game two. Top side will be the focus for both of these teams. You expect the Tom Kench will get pushed in by the Soraka lane, and I think bots will mostly be in isolation unless either lane is over pushed. We're going to have to keep our eyes on top side to see if owner can repeat what Wei did with the Sejuani and Melee top. I think RNG will be very quick to defend and breathe on this Aatrox. T1 looking to clean sweep RNG. Are we going to get any level one shenanigans? Owner is running the phase rush as well on this Sejuani, similar to Wei last game. A lot of melee champs that he might need to escape after landing his combo. The crowd is going nuts for both of these teams, supporting their regions. LCK up against the LPL, T1 currently 2-0 up. We'll see if RNG can reverse sweep. T1 has never been reverse swept at Worlds before. And for RNG, this is now starting to look like once more that the spring curse is real for them. Looking great in spring, winning MSI, but 
Somewhere in the LPL has always belonged to the likes of EDG, and now sitting 0-2 down against T1, they got to see if they can muster everything Minions they can to get us back to that game five. And you talked about it before, Dag, the how RNG has finished every single place at Worlds except for winning. They've lost out in groups, they've lost in quarters, they've lost in semis, they've lost in finals. But two they're, T1 and two T1, but they're yet to find a win. And gentlemen, at the bottom of your screen, a total aside, you'll see a very adorable emote. Make sure to grab the exclusive Very Nasty as much WoW emote from Prime Gaming by connecting your League of Legends account with the Prime account. So we now shift our attention back towards the bottom side because, again, the last game all about top side. Baguma changed that narrative, changed that story. He was one man versus the world in so many of these fights, and we'll have to see if he can do the same again. So meanwhile, in the mid lane already, aggressive trading. Same matchup as the previous game. Both players gaining confidence in the 1v1. Yeah, and from seeing this matchup multiple times, it looks like it's Akali favored early on. And when Silas can start pushing back, he's after first base. Uh, Baker was doing a similar thing last game. Nice E from Guma there to get some good trades onto this Soraka. The Soraka will need a three levels. Xiaohu now stepping forward as well. It's gone abduct on the level one. Baker, though, extending the trade, has the empowered auto. Didn't get it. That could have been pretty devastating for Xiao, who probably going to see a lot of jungle action around this mid lane if it is so back and forth, and you're starting to see these early trades going heavily. But I mean, at the moment, with push on bot side, with push going in favor of T1 on the top end as well, owner going to have a good amount of access to how he wants to try and play this match. Yeah, debating where they're going to go, what the option is going to be. Level 3 is going to be crucial for both of these solo lanes here once the full kits are up and available so you can come out on top of the trades. Yone, of course, notoriously very obnoxious to lane against. Yeah, the Aatrox needs way more points in Q. It's such a long cooldown at level 1. Needs around level 4 or 5 to start being able to trade back against Yone just because of raw cooldown. So T1 managed to get a little bit of bot push. Fighting back against Gala and Ming. Wei is around mid here. Faker, not sure if the W or the Shroud is on cooldown, but here he comes. Comes the Q. Walking into the Shroud, waiting for his jungler to arrive. Just waiting, he has so much time from the Shroud, and now they're committing to the fight. They want to get a Xiaohu flashing out. Faker flashing out, way in the area. The way wants to finish the job. Oh, Shuriken flip over the wall. Raptor free aggroing. Little auto attacks, little chickens trying to knock him down, but it will not happen. Xiaohu stepping forward is a big risk. Faker going over the wall. It's a massive escape. Does he have the execute? Time is ticking. He needs to get towards this tower. Way does not flash. The tower. Does he trying to get time? away from it, Faker. Whoa! I have never seen a player die. So well. Really good execute there by Faker. The Raptors didn't actually turn on him very quickly, so he managed to live on such a low health bar. Denies the first blood from RNG and manages to TP back at the same time as Xiaohu, who was chasing him down. Also gives owner a bit of access into this top side as well, so he'll be able to take the Rift Scuttle, knowing that he's got a little bit of an advantage, being able to take that, but really well played by Faker. Holds on so long, waiting for the Sejuani to come through, and every single time, Wei and Xiaohu try to predict it, they miss, and Xiaohu just barely getting back to his turret. And then I thought this was going to be Revenge of the Nuggets, but it's not going to be the case. Faker <laughs> manages to escape away with that one just a bit. Yeah, they didn't get any auto attacks in. Blast cones away from the Vi Q, and no flashes on the RNG mid jungle means there's no way they can finish him off. Execute comes in, and Xiaohu is forced to base and TP back. Waves coming into Faker. Owner doesn't get the kill on the Xiaohu, but both mid jungles blowing all their summoner spells. Meanwhile, on the bottom side, you saw Kari and Guma holding on to the push for a little bit in the early levels, but as there are a few more levels under the belt of Gala and Ming, they are able to crash that wave in. Guma not there to collect some of that CS, so they're going to continue to build up that bot side advantage. Looks like we might have missed out on some of the aggressive trading. Owner returning to top side, looking for this lane gank, and at the start of the day, Kajal, you said it, like clockwork. Owner, 3-4, he comes top side, he yes. looks for a lane gank. He's done this a lot in the LCK, level 3-4 lane gank, top in, Breathe dies. Infernal Chain's there, now going to go back here. Breathe, stun now coming out, he's under the tower. But they just cannot finish the kill. They're helping crash the wave there. Breed was quite far up. He wants to hold the wave near his tower. But in the end, he's forced to flash out. T1 get the crash. Zeus gets the base off. I'm not sure if he has Berserker Greaves in base. We'll have to see if he has enough gold for that item. Because that's a big spike. No, he doesn't. Boots double dagger. It's going to sting a little bit. But still gets the wave in. You can see though, Wei is starting to move up back towards this top side though. Zayus still has his flash, it was only Breeze that was burned, so maybe we can get some help from Wei up towards Breeze in that top side, but it is going to be a little bit of a, a difficult situation when Breeze isn't going to be able to follow up as easily as you'd like. Definitely can be. XP lead, you can see going to Breeze. Still able to TP back, still able to get a lot of that. Zayus holding onto his TP for now, could be an advantage as you look ahead towards the objectives. Bot side pushing in here and Woman Carrier doing what they can to hold on to the advantage, but so hard against Gala, so hard against the Aphelios. When he has the Infernum, the blue gun, up and available. 
Yeah, has the Noon Quiver as well, so he can push us in whenever he wants, but he's leaving the wave on his side because jungle's top, right? There's no real need to start pushing these waves out. They only have Vision in Tribush, and T1's jungler is around the bot side of the map, so they're just gonna let these waves crash, stay under their tower, be safe until waves down towards bot, but he's looking at top side right now. Yeah, I like the way T1 are playing this slow, though. You know that in the end of the day, you're kind of waiting for you know, the likes of Rift Tower to come up so you can use the fact you have push in three waves. Looks like Wave's just gonna be up here to help with the wave crash, similar to what Owner was doing, but Owner trying to make a wraparound play. Might visit this top end. Their Q landing. Zayus just gonna walk out on that one. Wave will crash, so successful play on the top side for RNG as Shahu and Faker just continue to trade in the mid lane. They're always trading. Okay, last game was the exact same, just permanent trading. Every time you walk up to the Raven, this meeting matchup, Silas can do this. Full committing. Ulti up and available. Faker, where is he gonna go again? He's just waiting as long as humanly possible. Now the whole committal, Shahu, the interrupt coming in from Owner. Breeze coming over the wall. He has the ulti up. Dark and Blade, one pack to connect. Owner now caught in. Infernal Chain gonna pull him back. And that is it. First blood for RNG. Beautiful combo by Breathe onto Owner. Carry out. Could look for the flashing knife. Q here. Trying to finish him. Oh, sniped down. Guma and Carry make themselves known in the mid lane. T1 say anything you can do, we can do better. Moving Guma Yushi up gets the kill, but again we go. Oh, oh the sidestep. Look at the way he moves, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. No, they're turning on the way. How can he do this to TK? It's just so damn fast. She come from bot, they get towards mid, two kills over to this Varus. Incredible series by the bot lane of T1. Extremely quiet since the end of spring, since the end of MSI. But they're stepping up here. Breathe has no flash. Zeus waiting, misses the first Q. That's going to be big. Buys him a bit more time. Stun now going to connect. Zeus can take his time. Going for the style. Finish. Swords hit left and right. Breathe, no way out of this one. Trying to heal up a little bit more. But no. What? Wait, does he? Oh! No! It looked like Breathe might have just barely got in over the back of that. And T1 now picking up several kills off the back of that. The news, though, around bot side, though, two kills for Gumayushi is great, but two plates went to Gal in the meantime as well. So sitting basically even on that bot end, but the top side big win for T1. So many skirmishes, three to one in kills, salvaged by the bot lane of T1. Like, like you said, they lose a little bit for it, but man, do they do it in style. Zhao Hu goes for the all in onto Faker, actually sees Owner as he dashes forwards, thinks he has enough damage for the kill. Baits in owner and breathes combo here pretty much perfect. Lands the Q1, W's on the phase rush, Q2 to knock him up to make sure the pullback lands the Q3. But here's where the T1 bot lane comes in. Yeah, I think owner actually stopped the Kingslayer from Xiaohu, which is why Faker didn't go down. And then, as you say, flash forward auto. Oh, and T in the can't, chest. You can't do it to him. It's dirty. Right but it's beautiful. Back. Right in the back. And then an incredible outplay afterwards. But we got to go back to live because the Herald's been started up. It's 8 minutes, 45 seconds into the game. RNG don't look like they can contest. Gala is all the way down towards the red buff. Faker doesn't have the TP. We'll see if RNG opt for the 4v4. Nothing for them to do here. No fight for them, but Zeus, three stacks have been available. They could look to commit on to breathe instead, just going to back away. They got what they came for. They got the Herald. And we are off to another stellar start for T1. Terrifying, terrifying team to be matched up against. And again, credit to the T1 bottom lane. Every time we say it's going to be about the top side of the map, the T1 bottom lane begged to differ. Is, is Karyat just covering Faker here, or does he want to dive bot? Gala has summoners. He's TP'd here with his spell book. Looks like he's just covering for now, but here comes the W to get the slow on to Gala. See if they can commit to the full dive. Faker does manage to land it. Big damage now coming into Gala. He's going to the healing off the sever. Malt flashing out to safety, trying to finish the job. But Karya there to eat up Faker. Gala, it's nearly flawless play, but they're just too damn strong. Faker, the shield is going to fade away. Carry the shield! Oh, Gala! Oh, being on the chase now as well, but they've locked him down. What is this? It's madness on the bottom side. T1. Are they able to find the kill on the main Shahu now as well? It just does not stop. This game is a bloodbath from RNG T1. Game three has exploded, and we're not done yet. Top dive coming in. Owner has the ult. Zeus does as well. Breathe lets the wave crash. Looks like he's going to clear it out, but he's not safe just yet. The Sejuani's hiding in that bush. Breathe. Oh. Breathe might just be his last breath here. And there is the Yone. Finding it. Breathe oh. still healing. He's oh. too damn clean. That was so clean from Breathe. We'll see if he can stand this tower. Zhao, who has the TP, but he's pushing in. But the ultimate will fade away. Karia finds way on the dragon. Owner has Herald. See if Zeus goes for the Q3. Dashes away. Herald's propped. Again, Dark and Blade up and available. He's waiting. He knows the second he shows his cooldown, the second he uses that first Q, they'll know exactly where the next one goes. Zayu stepping through it, diving through it, trying to finish off the job, and they will be able to do so. Leaping out, but gets taken down in the end. Owner going to try to finish this tower. One for one in the dive. Xiao is TPing in. Owner has to flash, but I don't think Xiao Hu can gap close in time. Herald falls. Xiao Hu catches the wave. So much fighting across the map.
T1 forcing bot, T1 forcing top, RNG responding on both sides. Exactly, that's why draw your eyes to the top of the screen. It's still so close when it comes towards the gold because there's been trades for turret plates, for kills back. Across the board, this game is still within touching distance, especially when Breathe is able to turn around these dives. Uh -oh. Same as RNG did on bot side. Area has the sweeper. They're in the next brush. Ming, Ming stepping forward, looking oh. to lock him up, trying to lock down the bars. The silence going down as well as Home can't eat him. He's trying to run for his life. Goomba flashing out. Goomba take it down. Gala finds the kill. The Tom Kenji eat was around five seconds until it was back up. The second wave flashed in there. They were so close to having that play backfire and losing out on the kill, but they managed to pull it off. They don't turn it into an objective. No dragon up yet. They can't push for plates because Faker hovering towards this bot side. Xiaohu up towards the top side of the map. Good pick there by RNG. Really good kind of awareness of the Tom Kench ult CD. And at this World Championship, we have seen T1 and RNG be the cool, the calm, and collected. And now they are coming out swinging haymakers left and right, and I am all for it. As again, we're getting heavy trades for RNG in the top side, but we have to keep our eyes on things like the Rift Jar that's going to be up in three minutes, the Dragon that's going to be up soon as well. It feels like whoever is able to take these fights at these neutrals is going to be able to blow up in this game. So much pressure. It's so tense because you know at any moment a fight could break out or four people will show up on the bottom side seemingly out of thin air. Just all in each other. Oh. Ming waiting over the wall. This is a bit precarious because the Tom Kenshin now coming in follow up. Ming caught in no man's land. That's the stun. That's Fall Carry. It doesn't quite make it over the wall. Stun still gets a tongue lash though. That's the stun. And it's more than enough. But now they're looking to get a little bit more. Xiao who caught out here. Stack first on that one. Flash out to safety. Find the area. They will not pursue for anything else. But Ming caught sleeping. Had the sweeper over the wall, their owner saw Ming, but there was no reinforcements ring and no flash either. Gumushi will translate that into a plate. Xiaohu has lost his flash. Wei knows that Gala's going to be dove and they have no flash on him. TP ready for breathe if they want to commit to this dive. RNG have a response. The Soraka ultimate is up as well. Soraka ultimate up. Guns way worse in the dive than they were last time, but still strong overall. That's the ulti. The Gale Force out. He still gets hit. But there will be no follow-up. Massive damage coming in from the Varus already. Meanwhile, on the top side, the 1v1 Zayu is snapping back on the Soul Unbound. Neither side able to get much in the trade. And this is where, again, we're seeing T1 trying to put the pressure on, trying to see if they can be the ones that start off these dives. And at least so far, they've been a bit mismanaged, but T1 still now starting to get control. Look at the amount of vision they have on this bot side. They're just trying to continuously play around Gumuyushi now. This is so frustrating on the top side, as you see as well, for Breathe. He's constantly being oh, Hold that thought. Spotted out. He's oh! The blue smite didn't stop the base. He just got the recall off in time. Gumayushi barely escapes with his life. And that is the difference of half a second. Wei loses the alt cooldown, too. That is devastating. But now Xiaohu connects on the chains. Crown gonna fade away. Breathe. On the top side, owner. Oh, he's dead. Looking to find the play. Breathe. He has to try to find a way. That is one. There's just too much CC. Take it out. Theos finds another kill. Even through the Soraka ultimate, T1 gets first break on this top side, and RNG no response. Way not there in time. Xiaohu not having the TP. Soraka doesn't do enough. Breathe falls. And T1 are just doing a great job across map, right? Every time you see Wei or Xiaohu moving somewhere in the map, Owner's going to the opposite side. They don't get the kill on Guma Yushi. Immediately, Owner gets a response on top end. And now Zay is three and one on his pocket pick in this Yone. Massive in the side lanes. And Breed was looking like he'd cost a miracle by getting this Aatrox in the top side. But it's no longer the case. He's in so much trouble in comparison to Zay. And bless him, he's tried his best. He managed to go for the one for ones. But Wei has kind of abandoned him since that first kill up towards the top side. He's just been playing around mid bot most of the time, trying to match T1's plays. And owner has been finding these windows, finding these angles to dive, breathe. Managed to trade one for one earlier on, but this time he falls. Herald spawning in five seconds. Owner is in the area. And no tower behind breathe means he might just die again. The jungler of T1 collapsing on this top side. Big Faker is pick. around as well in the meme map. Finding the pick would be massive before the next big objective. Faker not going to pursue for anything else. Breathe. Holding on for now. But on the bottom side, Zayo's already pushing in. More and more gold going to the back pocket of this Yone. RNG though, starting the Herald. T1 make these plays to force RNG to one area while they're doing something else on the map. Bot tier 1 will fall. Zayo's has the TP. If T1 want to take this 5v5, they can take it. Here comes the TP. Getting ready to kick things off. Zayo's no ultimate up and available, but he might not need it. Area standing on the front line, the silence from the Soraka, important to track. Gala, perfect guns for a fight, but T1 aren't going to give them the fight. They use the TP just to get them off the Herald. Meanwhile, they've already broken bot lane. Purely positive trade for the side of T1. 
It's just smoke and mirrors, isn't it? But now they're engaging. The knockout, locking up Grant Green. That's going to be big way now. Stepping forward as well. This is Warney now making it out. Safety Devour. That denies the buy. The stun going to follow up. Over the wall comes the Yone. Big in the midst of the entire team now running. Trying to make his way out. But the Aatrox will fall. Gala, the last man standing. The fancy footwork. Not enough yet. Tower laid down, perfect guns to try to turn the fight, but for now, T1 massively ahead in the exchange. Huge team fight there by Faker, manages to find two on the back side of it. RNG didn't have a lot of space to work with, they were stuck in this choke, and T1 chased them down. Zeus gets the initial kill on to way, and Faker kills the solo lanes of RNG. Also, as you say, Kedge, the smoke and mirrors. I mean, owner's sitting there, kind of poking, prodding, waiting to see if he'll engage, but it's Carrier from out of Vision, who gets on towards Breathe, completely catches them unaware, and sets up then for Owner. And this eats from Carrier, waits so long to save Owner. Zeus flashes over, gets killed away. Now watch Faker in the 1v2 up against these solo lanes. He has so much space to work with, so many targets to choose from. Gala takes down Zeus on the backside, so many shurikens. Faker kills Breathe, dashes on the R2 onto Zhao Hu. Gala managed to get that shut down, but incredible team fight there from the T1 mid laner. And from Zeus as well, right? Like being able to zone Gala away from that fight, make sure he can't play in with his team. And Wei, I mean, that's the look of a defeated man on that stage. It's a hard situation to be in. 4K down in an elimination game. Match point for T1. They are not taking their foot off the gas. They're looking to break open. Oh. That's the Soraka caught. The follow-up going to come through. Should be an easy kill. They can't quite finish it. Arrow now going in. Will not connect on the Ming. Standing strong for now. Wei looking to cover his bottom lane. Kumayushi's ult on cooldown there. Didn't have it up to follow up, but the dragon's up and Ming needs to base. So this should be a free objective for T1, their first dragon of the game. 17 and a half minutes in, very far away from that sole point, but we'll slowly start to stack them up. I feel like the last few games, what we've seen is Baron dances into dragon. And I think starting to stack these up now will benefit T1, of course. Carrier. Carrier cut out, good damage. Xiaohu coming off to the side, gonna steal the bars off and get a little oh. lock of Luma, but he whiffs! It's a massive whiff and it costs him so much. The play disappearing. Faker hunting for more away now, has to go and he has no choice. Breathe the backside now running for his life as well. T1 taking another exchange and another all goes wide. RNG cannot find a target. Xiaohu tried to predict the flash on Guma Yushi with the chains of corruption, but again, Guma with the nerves of steel holds strong, and it means that they can turn that fight, get the pick on away, and once more T1 putting their foot down on this game. Yeah, hope is slowly fading here from RNG. The skirmish is never really going in their favor. It's not over just yet, but they're incredibly far behind. They have no agency in side lanes. Their front line is incredibly weak and so easy to burn through for T1. Their last hope right now is Gala, but it's here where Xiaohu tries to find Gomyushi. The initial sidestep on the E was great, but I think, like you said, this must be a predict flash here because this is incredibly wide. I think it was just movement, actually. I think Gomyushi just dodged it, and Xiaohu thought he kept running in a straight line. Wei has to go in and dies. And for RNG, a team that has three MSI titles to their name, it has been the World Championship that has eluded them for so long. But now up against the most successful organization that League of Legends has ever seen at the World Championship, it feels like RNG just don't have enough. Their side lanes are running out of control. Zeus is having full control. Faker has full control with the advantages that they picked up. And now RNG can't contest the map as easily as Guma will just get to siege against Gala and me. We heard it at the top of show from the analyst desk. Faker has never failed to finish lower than semifinals. It's always been semifinals, finals, or a win. And he's looking to keep that legacy alive. So much healing reduction actually on the T1 lineup from the solo lanes means this Soraka and Aatrox will struggle in fights. And on this day, exactly five years ago, RNG beat Fnatic to make it to the semis. That was the last time they saw a semifinals of Worlds. T1 looking to make him wait one more year. Harold set up in the mid lane, pressure on for both sides. Everyone on RNG knowing that a single misstep could cost them. Breathe on the flank. Gate goes a little bit wide, they're trying to lock him down. Chao, who now stepping forward, carry off to the side, now trying to make it out. Kuma still standing on the back line, and in goes the Yone, the damage is massive. The Soraka healing, will it be enough? But no, the Aatrox falling down. Gala, can he be the difference maker? He takes down the Herald, they're on the retreat, but here, oh, Carrier! TK, Carrier still stands, he goes golden. He does it with style, it's a slaughter. It's a wipe on RNG, T1 clean house, Zeus falls, but RNG didn't have the damage to deal with the skirmish. T1 just run them down. T1 
T1 are decimating RNG in the best of five. They're showing that MSI was just a glitch and they will continue to control and dominate the matchup against RNG. What a team fight. It was just absolute mayhem in the mid lane. So many melee champs on top of one another, but it's Gumayushi that stands strong and it's Karius Eat that saves the initial engage up against RNG with the Silas stolen ultimate of the Sejuani. As RNG was thinking about a Baron there, I wonder but they choose against it, T1 in the vicinity. T1, they spent so many years rebuilding. How many different rosters, how many different lineups have we seen them show up to international competition, trying to find the perfect five, the perfect fit. But in a series like this, you can't help but feel like they are closer than ever to that final form. And you have to wonder if Zeus was just the final piece of the puzzle. Kana really struggling at Worlds last year. Now they solid it. This rookie top laner who's been having a stellar year, being considered as one of the best tops in the world in your rookie year is definitely one of the biggest feats and achievements that you can get. Well, we're about to find out, right? If Zayas wins this game, he's going to be going up against 369, the other person who can test him the most. So that is a, potentially a date with destiny that we might see Zayas take that title once and for all. But D1 have to close out this game, make sure that they're able to continue this push through the three lanes. Faker on top side, Zayas on bot, and Carry is fishing every single time for Wei. So 1-3-1 one, one set up here from T1. Faker's TP is just about to come back up. They're moving their mid lane push into bot, but there's no wave just yet. Dragon's up in 40 seconds, which will be the exit objective, but they want to force here a little bit. Wei, not scared Wave. though. Stepping forward, taking a lot of damage here. He's just getting shredded! Gumiyushi damage is out of control. He's just so far ahead. T1 pushing down here. We'll get this tier two that they look for. 30 seconds on that dragon. I think they can take a base if they want to and come back out to take that one down. But game one, really T1 favored. Game two, incredibly close and RNG favored. But game three, looking like T1 is just demolishing them. Wave falls. The Eastern carrier was great to allow Gumiyushi to free hit. And then it was Zeus with the E who's just cleaning around with Faker. Carrier take tanks the brunt of the damage and continues to do so. And this double knockoff was just insane onto the bot lane of RNG. They're forced back. And even under tower, T1 just keep going. And usually RNG isn't a team that would just be wiped out. Isn't a team that would just give up. But Zeus off on the side. Xiaohu getting knocked down. But Zeus still standing strong for now. Look for the third Q. We're going to snap back. He doesn't have the third Q to escape though. Gala can finish the kill instantly. That is the trade back, one for one in the end. I mean, that's T1 styling on them as well. Zayas looking for task will be the one for one, but I mean, RNG, they haven't been able to muster much of a fight. It was the reason that they were able to get back to Worlds was because they got they were able to deny the reverse sweep versus LNG. They're, like, we've seen them come back from these deficits so often, but this one is, looks like the writing is on the wall as T1 again pick up another dragon. Faker in the darkness, breathing way in the area. As the blast comes, still wants to go in, still wants a little bit more. He thinks he can one-shot him. Aatrox healing coming in clutch. Faker getting locked up. Can they finish oh, the kill? Oh. Yes! Yes, he can! Perfect execution coming through there. Carry in the era. area. Now ready to deny them. Going for way! Faker! Absolute madman. Going in, owner coming in as well. Gumiyushi locking him down on the backside. T1 looking to slaughter RNG. Looking to take every single thing away from them. Faker has fallen, but T1 are standing strong. Xiaohu will be chased down here, trying to pick up the crab. All of T1 looking for him. Pings onto the Baron, though. That is just going to be an easy objective. Weighs down, breathes down with no TP. Ming is down. It's only the carries of RNG that can stop this, but I don't think they can walk in. But how do you even try to fight back now as RNG? Your entire composition revolves around you flying face first into T1, and they are waiting there with open arms oh. every single time. Baron will go the way of T1. And right now, I mean, the fact that they're bringing out things like this, Yone, Zayas looking fantastic into this Aatrox matchup. They brought out things like the Heimerdinger. You can see how much T1 has, the depth that this organization has in this squad. And you can see how much has changed in three months from an MSI final that was neck and neck, that went the entire way, that went to five games to an absolute slaughter. RNG had a chance in game two, and T1 took it away from them. But games one and game three have been T1 from the start. T1 has just been playing with so much confidence. This game, Zeus willing to take really aggressive 1v1s in their bot side jungle, ends up falling, but then Faker is the one going in 2v2, 2v3 up against RNG. No real fear in their eyes. And with this Baron buff, they're going to push down onto this top tier two. T1 going for, looks like a 1-4. They're sacrificing bot lane because they know that RNG will overload and look for a pick. So they want to keep pressure on two lanes. Faker's pushing in mid, T1's pushing in top, and they can rotate between the two. I don't think anyone will base from T1 and catch that wave because RNG is now backing away after picking up that tower. Zeus next to Faker. Have to be careful. Gala forced to flash. Guma still with ulti up and available. 
All of its sums. RNG, this is such a difficult hold. So impossible for them to clear all these waves to match all of the pressure that T1 are putting down. And it feels like you need Gala to kind of be the the final bit that can maybe carry this. I mean, he has five kills. There they go. Lock up, knock down, carry, holding on to the LT as long as possible. T1 not taking that as an opportunity to re-engage. Zeus over the wall, laying down a bit of damage, but leaping right back out. I think RNG are trying to get the Tom Kench eat so that Chao, who's said Juani ult, can land onto Gumyushi as the next follow-up, but they hit Faker. Up, hitting Faker, now trying to take Faker out of the fight entirely. Soraka healing already coming down. Carrier leaping out of the Infernal Chains, double stuns. Zeus oh, going in! It is massive! T1, blood in the water, they're ready to pursue, they're ready to end this game. T1, hungry for more. One last kill, a few more to follow. And it is not with a bang, but a whimper that RNG will exit Worlds as they are slaughtered in their own bases. T1 look to bring it home. They are not satisfied with old rivalries and fourth seeds. They want number one. They want a shot at the best in the LPL. They want a semifinal, and they will get it as they face JDG in Atlanta as they break RNG and cross the finish line in the quarterfinals. A disappointing end for RNG, but a roaring success for T1. An incredible performance in the quarterfinals, bringing out their pocket picks, bringing out the plays they needed, and being able to fight back from deficits in game two. T1 are terrifying. They really are. And the only game they've lost so far at Worlds was that Fnatic game in group stage. 3-0 up against RNG. I don't think many people expected that given that RNG's form was looking pretty strong. Yes, they're the LPL's fourth seed, but they are the MSI champions, so maybe they put up a big fight against T1, but T1 just sweep them away. Game two should have been theirs, but T1 managed to crawl it back, and this squad is looking incredibly dangerous. Both sides of this bracket now, JDG and T1 both 3-0ing their opponents. It's gonna be a very, very exciting semi-finals next week. Across the board, T1, terrifying threat, commiserations. Their opponents on the opposite side, RNG, the Dark Horse, when they made it to this tournament, their history. Given a lot of people faith, what they saw on the group stage, but it was not enough today. Outclassed seemingly everywhere by the likes of T1. And again, now we look ahead, we look